Let us pray. Gracious Father, we come before your living water today to refresh us, unite us, and strengthen us for this upcoming life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your living water in your precious name. Amen. We want to welcome our homebound um, members with us today um, in, in through the, our video. We thank you for John Voss taping a couple of Sundays each month, and then his mom, Donna Voss, takes that, that videotape, and so they can be with us. So we welcome you. Um, like Paul Kaiser and many others that, um, that are watch, will watch us later in the week to receive God's word. Water. Boy, yesterday, just going down Highway 69, we saw a lot of car washes, youth, high schoolers, and of course, Jeffrey Voss and his girlfriend Haley washed my muddy vehicle yesterday. And we love water, and especially when it gets warm and, and uh, enjoy all uh, that great, fresh taste of water. But today we're talking about a different kind of taste of water that was really encouraging this past week. We have a, a great church sign here that you guys have put many years ago on Lakeshore. And I appreciate Pastor Lyle for doing the sign each week. But let me tell you, Pastor Lyle, this past week, a teenager came up to me at one of our activities, uh, one of the friends of one of our members, and she asked, tell me more about that sign, that free trip to heaven details in. Will you guys talk about that, you know, during the week? It was awesome because, you know, that anything we do becomes a witness. And she's been struggling with her journey with anger. And, and so we're able to share the gospel message with her. And she believes in Jesus. I go, that's your free ticket. That's your free. And that's what we're talking about every Sunday morning. And so a, a sign like that that team was just focusing throughout the day and says, tell me. And that's what we're here today, we're talking about that, that incredible water. So let's begin our study in John chapter 4. It's kind of neat, as you see here, that Jesus' love has no boundaries. No boundaries, because here we talk about Palestine, about 120 miles of north and south that Jesus is traveling. And you have Judea that's in the bottom. All right, that's the tribe that he comes from. You have Samaria that's in the middle and Galilee up north. And so Samaria is kind of interesting is that King Solomon, after he passed away, his son, Rehoboam, was going to take over. And the people came to King Solomon, to, to King Rehoboam, and says, if you'll be a little bit nicer than your dad, we will follow you. Well, our sons, do they ever follow the, their dad? King Rehoboam went to his, son, his dad's advice and goes, what should I say? And they go, oh, listen to them, and they'll follow you. So then the son goes to his buddies and asks, what should I do? Give me some advice. And they say, boy, if you thought my dad was tough, you haven't seen anything yet. And that's what he told the people. So ten tribes took off saying, we're not going to worship you. And so that became the northern kingdom of Israel. And so King Rehoboam destroyed his dad's kingdom and his grandfather's kingdom and just had two tribes, the south, called Judea. And then when King Assyria, the Syrians were the major power of the world. When they came, they destroyed northern kingdom. And they took them as slaves and they brought other people in. And so then that northern kingdom was intermingled with, with people and they intermarried. And so the southern kingdom always looked down on the fallen northern kingdom. And they become Samaria. And there was a division among them. And so... It, Jews did not associate with the Sumerians. And the Sumerians did not associate with the Jews. Because the Jews, they thought they were pure. The Sumerians were intermingled with other tribes, other races. And so here's the conflict. But Jesus comes, and he breaks down every barrier, doesn't he? It doesn't matter where you come from, but that he loves us, and that he guides us to his incredible salvation. And so here you see now Jesus learns that the Pharisees had heard what he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. This is interesting. You don't hear that too often, but Jesus' disciples are baptizing. And that's what we celebrate today in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And they're now at the River Jordan. But Jesus sees that the disciples of John and the Pharisees are having more concerns and conflicts, so he goes north. It's time to take a break, and they go through Samaria, and he comes to the well. Now, here we go, verse 7. This is neat. Jesus is the word that becomes flesh, and we see that Jesus is thirsty. 
We celebrate that Jesus is 100% divine and also 100% human. And so when the Samaritan woman, verse 7, came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? The disciples went to go into town to buy some food. And she, the woman says, you are a Jew, I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? Not only the Jews are not associated with the Samaritan, but the men. Here's now a, almost like a rabbi, Jesus, a teacher, is talking to a woman. And many um, commentators talk she probably came alone because of her lifestyle. And so usually the women would come later together. But here, so here he comes to her. Ask him for a drink, a man. In verse 10, Jesus answered, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. What is this living water? We go to Jeremiah chapter 2.13. My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water. All right, this is cool. In the Old Testament, it says that Jeremiah chapter 2.13, here's the prophecy that the Messiah is the living water. But we have forsaken it. And look what happens. This is the, the, another part here. And have dug their own wells. Broken wells that cannot hold water. This is powerful. We could just stop right there and say, this is our sin today. Is that we believe in Christ, we celebrate, but how often, how much Sprite do I drink over water in a day? There's a number of days that I'll sprinkle more Sprite than water. I know water is good for me. I know water is healthy for me. I have more energy. I have everything. My body works much better when I drink something healthy in water. But why do I keep going back to something that's not healthy? And this is our journey and our struggle daily in our spiritual life too. We were here this morning. We celebrate Jesus. We give thanks to Jesus. But what's going to happen throughout the week? We start to worry, we start to get angry, we start to get panicked because we're drinking things from this world that doesn't give us life. Life that helps us throughout the day. And we know this. We, we hit ourselves. We curse ourselves. I wish I drank a little more water. I wish I would have done a little more healthy things. But we keep, this is our struggle. We keep going back. And Ezekiel, some of the other prophecy, Ezekiel 47, 9, swarms of living creatures will live whenever the river flows. There will be a large number of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. Whenever we're connected with Jesus, there's life. Whenever we stray away from Jesus, what happens to our life and our spiritualness? We start to dehydrate. And boy, when we, when we know that we're dehydrating, what do they say? That's too late. And then, and then we're struggling to get back to our full health. Zechariah 14, 6, 9 says, On the day there will be neither sunlight nor cold, frosty darkness. It will be a unique day, a day known only to the Lord, with no distinction between day and night. When evening comes, there will be light. On that day, living water will flow out from the Jerusalem half into the east to the Dead Sea and the half of its west to the Mediterranean Sea in summer and winter. And the Lord will be king over the earth and on that day there will only be one Lord and his name is the only name and that's what we celebrate when heaven is all about. But listen, she doesn't get it. Jesus always takes physical things and turns it into spiritual. So then in verse 11 and on, she goes, where do I get this living water? And in verse 15, the woman says, sir, give me this water so I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. So what does she do? What has Jesus done? Okay, she doesn't get it. Let me get more intimate. Let me show you your life and how you're always thirsty for something but never satisfied. You're always needing something but never being content. Let me take a look at your life. So he goes, go call your husband and come back. Well, I, I don't have a husband at this time. And Jesus replied, you're right when you say you have no husband. The fact is that you have had five husbands. And the man you now have is not your husband. Wow. All of a sudden, she just realized this guy is a prophet. Look what he just said. 
And that's what Jesus does in our lives. He, he has to convict us, saying, Tim, this is not healthy for you. Look what you're doing. Look how your body is now hurting. Not only physically, but emotionally. Whatever physical thing, materials, whatever, I think that's going to crunch my thirst in life. He points it out and says, it doesn't work. Go ahead, Tim. If you want, go ahead and do. If you think that earthly is going to satisfy you, I'll, go ahead. I'll give you a whole case of Sprite if you want. Go ahead. It's not going to work. It'll never be quenched. And so, but he has to first convict us. That's why in the Lutheran church, we focus on the law first. The law shows us, and a mirror shows us our sin that we have fallen short because we just go back to creation and not the great creator that gives us all good things. And then he continues. Then she tries to change the subject, right? She tries to, I don't want to talk about personal life. Let's go to worship. Let's talk about worship. But that's exactly what Jesus wants her to do. Because you Samaritans worship, or she goes, woman, he replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. The Samaritans worship on a mountain close where Abraham had his first altar when he came into the promised land. And then Jacob was there later when he met Esau for forgiveness and did a well there and bought the land there. Samaritans believe in the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, the Torah. They didn't focus on anything else. And so Jesus says, listen, you Samaritans worship you do not know. We worship what we do know is that they didn't know the Messiah. They didn't know God. They just worship. They didn't really know God himself. And so Jews, salvation comes from the Jews, even though the Jews miss the Messiah totally, as sometimes we do. But verse 23, yet a time is coming. All right, he's talking about him dying and rising for us. And now has come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and truth, for they are the kind of worship that the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth, saying, there's no location of worship. All right? It's not where you worship, it's who you worship. It's who you focus on, and it's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, whether here or anywhere. As our Lord and Savior. And truth is that, how much do we need Jesus? <laughs> we need him a lot. And this is what our focus is today, is that Jesus comes in our lives, rescues us, gives us plenty of water that we need. His gospel that refreshes us, encourages us. Whenever you're becoming dehydrated with this earthly life, man, go back to the living water. Jesus Christ refreshes us, encourages us. It was kind of cool. Deacon Fred Pamer and myself and Deacon Dennis Voss, we've been going to Granite Gates the last two Sundays. And there, afterwards, Mary Davis, one of our members, her parents are there. She calls me later in the week, later that Sunday night, and says, I just got a call from Alaska from a, a daughter whose parents go to Granite Gates. And her mom is so excited to have worship at her home at Granite Gates. From Alaska. The, the daughter says, I can't believe my mom sounds so good that she was able to worship. And that's because you have provided that worship. They can't come to us, so we go to them. And then it's me. At the end of that chapter, the guys come, the disciples come, and then he talks about food. Heavenly food. And then the woman comes back and brings her, her town people. And she shares the faith that this man knows everything about my life. And he doesn't condemn me. There's a years, over 100 years ago, there's a story about a, a ship in the Atlantic Ocean that was ran out of fresh water. They couldn't dip because it was salt water. And they were slowly dehydrating and dying. From a distance, finally they came and they saw a distant land. And another ship was coming. And they, they had a Distress saying, oh, hey, we're out of water. And the other ship responded saying, dip it up, meaning check out the water. And the ship that had no water, fresh water, says, are you crazy? Are you mocking us? We can't. We can't drink this. And they said it again, dip it up. <laughs> and then as they got closer, they were able to shout, the Amazon River 
is over here. And that fresh water goes in miles into the ocean. We're afraid of God at times. We feel he's going to condemn us. And so we're afraid to dip it up. Let's make it our joy this week to dip it up. To come, if you don't have devotional time every day, encourage you to have a little devotional time. Or pray a little bit more, inviting Jesus into your life throughout the day to dip it up to receive that great refreshing forgiveness and renewal. This past, in peace, this past Friday, this past Friday, Sharon and I were hiking and we got stuck in the mud. And we couldn't get out. And here my little two-wheel expedition just couldn't get out of that mud. But we start, she starts singing some Christian songs. And we realize that this is not the end of the world. After three hours of digging, I finally called AAA. <laughs> and what a great blessing when that tow truck came. Just to move us a couple feet out of that mush. We do that so often. We keep digging, keep digging, keep digging. It's now time. Let's call Jesus. And let him dig it up, that incredible fresh of living water. In Jesus' name, amen.